This patch here is a patch that Ira Wallace sent me a bunch of things to try. These I wish I'd taken the tops off. The ones that um, haven't gone to seed, let's pull one and see. And by the way, you can see the thrip damage on here. It's not bad, but it's there. It's those gray areas. See, they kind of made a shallot, yeah. It's not a big one, but they made it. But these guys here, not so much. You know, you can eat it, but most of it's up there. So what I should probably do is let those go to seed and try and propagate them from seed. These come Monday. Well, I might wait and you can tell when they're starting to elongate. And if I see them starting to go, I might let them put a little more size on. But now I'm here, I'm gonna watch them. It wasn't a good idea to go to Spain without saying, hey, watch those guys. Patrick, if you take that flower head off, is it going to, is the energy gonna go back into the bulb? Given that there's nothing but a flower stalk, I'd say the odds are poor. At this point, I'd say go for seed, you know, and learn a lesson, you know? Um, you know, and I, frankly, I'd like to have a little bit bigger shallots than that, you know? But it was not a good year, you know? This is, you know, and Ron England makes that point big time, you know, all these guys want that warming spring. They want the lengthening days. We might as well be in the middle of winter for as much sun as there was in those two weeks. You know? So it cost us. Okay, and so then the next guy we have here is Williams, Texas, multiplying onion. Okay, it's a top setting one. So I'll put, you know, I'm not even going to try to uh, harvest this. I'm just going to plant the plant the little bulb and that's it, you know? Um, and I'm not gonna pull it up because I don't see, you know, from the size of what's there, there's not much to pull up, I'm sure of it. And so that's okay. Um, once I have more of them, I'll be eating those prior to when they start to do that. But right now it's just gonna be about propagating them. And so far, I mean, Texas in here, a little different, you know? I'm not so sure that that, you know, maybe you should just send some of these to family in Texas. Maybe that's a Texas crop, we'll see. But I'll talk to Ira about it too. I, I think they probably do well in the South or she wouldn't have sent them to me. But they weren't the most successful. Wet, cold probably stunts them bad though. Yeah, right, that didn't help. That didn't help at all. Definitely not. Okay, and then here, this here is quite a bust. Let's see what we have here. This is Yellow Moon Perennial Onion. And Maybe they're gonna come back. That might be it. Let's see. But I'm afraid that what's happened instead, they are pretty rotted, you know? So I think that they were supposed to die back. Maybe I should have taken the tops off them and then they'd come back, you know, in the fall. But these are not, I'm gonna leave them in and maybe one or two will make it. But at the moment, I'd say when they can indent like that and stuff cushions out the end, that's called rotten. Yeah, they don't smell too good either, you know, so. Um, and that happens, you know, maybe, they're not, maybe not all suited to here. Um, I might have helped it a little by taking the tops off, but probably not enough. Um, this guy here, this is a red, French red shallot. These are the ones that probably are not suited to us timing wise, but I, it looks like from the size of the plants that if I had picked these before they went to seed, um, and boy, I feel some vole holes down there. I'm gonna stick my finger along this and I could just go and go, you know, as a tunnel. So these guys had a few things going against them. This guy here hasn't gone to seed. Let's see what we got. Okay, I don't need to badmouth these. They definitely did something. That's a respectable shallot. That's the nicest one so far, actually, you know. So I'll dry these down and replant, you know, there. Pretty respectable, you know. The ones that went to seed, we'll see if they make anything, you know, if they make seed. Um, and I'll write that off to not telling somebody to pull them out when they try to go to seed. But actually, I'd be happy if I, if I got a bunch of these every time. The question is, are they, have they amounted too much before they go to seed? That's it, you know, maybe only some. And so maybe I need to be selecting for the ones that don't go to seed. We'll see. All right, so. Who do we have here? Yeah, this is the perennial leeks here. And what I read, you know, I wondered, should I let that go to seed? Because it was starting when I got back and somebody does. So I figured, okay. 
Sounds like that's it's not going to run out. You know, some of these guys, like those there, they're obviously that was their last shot. If they don't make seed, there is no base reproduction. But it sounds like these are going to reproduce besides going to seed. So I'm going to let it do it both ways, and I'll propagate both ways. But they're looking they're looking fine. I don't see any problems there. And okay, this is the California early garlic, and you can see I'll pull one up. That one feels okay. Well, okay. There I go, bad mouthing it. That guy's not bad. But you can't tell looking at the plant because that's not 40%. You, you got to dig down and check, you know? That's it, you know? That's all you can do. You know, does everybody know what I mean by that now? You see the, where the, the wrapper is starting to rot away? Does that tell you those should be pulled over there too? No, they're not the same size. They're not, this is California early, you know? Yeah, no, this should theoretically get bigger and be able to stay in longer, but not when it's doing that, you know? So, okay. So is that not a keeper? This one is not a keeper. A yeah, 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 this is an eater. Um, I might keep it long enough to plant it again, though this, this tells me that I shouldn't give it the thumbs down I did, you know? I should look at it longer and see what I can learn from it, you know? But only because this is a research farm. <laughs> I've already got my prejudice against that. I wanna try some different ones, you know? I've been burned by it, you know, I'm not happy. Okay, and so the demonstration for cleaning. It's harder if the leaves are rot rotting because you can't get them to hold together long enough to pull off. But we'll show you, we'll pull one off and show you what it looks like. So it went from looking pretty ugly to looking really nice. And that color might well come back, by the way. You're not necessarily getting rid of the color. You know. But I can't clean that up. There's no leaf to pull off, you know, which makes it totally unmarketable. But if I dry it down pretty well and then keep it good and cold, it might wait till mid-September to plant again. You know, I'll see. It's not like I have to eat it. I don't need garlic. We'll have plenty of garlic. Um, okay, so that's that. This is Egyptian walking onion. And I don't think we have any where they're doing the second growth. It would have been fun to look at that, you know? Um, but I thought I saw, I thought I saw one. Okay, there you go. That's it. Yep. All right, that's why it's called a tree onion. From the bulbs, there's another bulb coming up. Yeah. Yep. That one there is probably going to do it pretty soon, but it hadn't gotten there yet. Yeah. This is McCoon's white multiplier onion. It opts as... This guy here, this guy here is from over there. That's this guy here. So it's multiplying from the top. Let's see if we can find one that hasn't gone to seed to see what it looks like. You can imagine with the bigger ones, if you got them before they went to seed, that'd be pretty nice, you know? Um, and then here is copper shallot. Okay, so I pulled those already. I'll pull another one right now. You can kind of see why they call it copper, you know? That, I'm pretty happy with those. Um, Green Mountain Multiplier Onion. This guy is just barely going to seed. We should still have some bottom on it. Yeah, there's some propagation can happen there, you know. I do some more growing before I try to eat on it, but it made quite a nice little bundle, you know. And like I said, they all should be doing better if we hadn't had all the rain that we had. This is Nate Kleiman who did a talk this year. He's a wild man plant collector. Sitting in my living room at 11 o'clock at night. We're talking and he's accessing the germplasm lab, ordering more germplasm. So he was in Puerto Rico and came back with Puerto Rican shallot slash potato onion. So I don't know if it really is a shallot or not, or a potato onion, but it is from Puerto Rico. So the light's gonna be, you know, it's not gonna be too long day, that's for sure. And that's this guy here. And that has reproduced, I started these late, it was like, mid-March when I started these, you know. And so day length wise, that's as big as they can get this year, but they'll reproduce from this. And next year, if I put them in in the fall, they might be some nice size onions, you know. Um, it was just about trying to get them to last and make it, and they did, they did. But then I'm not sure who this garlic is here, unfortunately, folks, I have to just say, it is obviously um, a stiff neck, but, and let's see, that actually is a pretty good example of, that might be the best curl we have here except for it's, that's weird, because it, it didn't uncurl, but it's definitely further along, so it should have been pulled. Usually, it's gonna uncurl more than that before you, you know, before it makes a flower. Yeah. 
So I shouldn't have pulled that and I should have said what it, what it can do with seed. Um, but I did. And I'm not gonna pull those garlics because I don't even know who they are. This is the German red, this guy here. But that's gonna be small because the top hasn't been off it. So these tops are late, right? This guy right here. Not at all red, but looking pretty good, you know? Um, these guys here won't be quite as good because they should have been pulled a while ago. We'll pull them all now. There's no reason to let them happen. Anybody want to take some garlic scapes home? Don't worry about being greedy. We have a refrigerator full of them. <laughs> I think that's everything there. And then these leeks, if they're a tag, I'm pretty sure they're King Richard. They were covered up in weeds until this Monday when I got here. And so now they might do some more growing and be pretty good. The only thing I didn't weed out of here was the farmscaping plants. So there's some volunteer anise hyssops and a couple of um, gloriosa daisies that we'll just take the loss in production so we can have the flowers. We make that choice all the time. And then here, I already complained to some people about this. Yeah, cup plant. I'm happy to talk to you about it. Um, it is a it is a northeast. It's a it's a northeast native. It likes wetlands, and we grow it because um, it makes little cups. If you can see right there, and those cups are a water resource for things like braconid wasps that are incredibly tiny flyers, but it's also medicinal. The um, it's got a latex. Well, actually, the latex must be later in the season because it's not latex right now. It's got a latex that. Um, was collected by the Indians, it was good for nausea. Some aspect of it is used for regulating women's menstrual cycle, I forget how. And in the spring, the greens are edible, they're kind of bitter, but if you like, if you like chicory and stuff, they're quite good. And it's a really high quality forage plant for animals, it's like 20 some percent protein, very palatable, they like to eat it. Um, and of course for pollinators, it's in bloom for like, you know, six or seven weeks, you definitely need some if you got bees. You know, it'll eventually spread by runners. So, so how do you get it? Um, well, you could probably dig one here. You know, it does spread by seed too. I can't dig one for everybody. If only a few people want it, I could dig them for them. It takes a lot you know, of cup plant, um, Silphium perfilatum. Um, there's a bunch of Silphiums. They all like the, oh, what I love about it. I got a bunch I want to plant along our swales. We just did a swale berm system because it'll grow into them and it can take submergence for up to 15 days. It's, it is a wetland plant, you know? So that rocks, you know? And it's major for the beneficials. It's feeding them for a long time, you know? Plus, it, I think it's pretty gorgeous, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's, it's a favorite, you know? Okay, so a comment on this. I know that I started Cipollini, gold coin, right? Cipollini is supposed to be a flat onion. I don't think that's going to get there. You know, I don't know what happened. I'm, I'm going to attribute it to all the rain, but maybe it was a genetic mix-up. Maybe they just, you know, they had, I'll, I'll contact Fedco and ask them if something went wrong, but maybe it was the rain, you know, but I remember seeding it. I had that, that packet in my hand. It was the only onions that got seeded then. They got seeded with the leeks, you know, so. Look at that seed head, Pat, right, right over here on your, on your row of weeds. Now, look at me. Oh, this. Okay, this is the wild garlic, garlic, and I got the Latin name for you. And, you know, some people harvest it and eat it. The people are, like, teaching you can eat, eat everything from the wild. Anybody want to try it? <laughs> that ain't my favorite, you know. And, of course, cows eat it at ten tenths of milk. It's just super strong. Super strong. Yeah. When I had goats, and they would eat it in the yeah. pasture, that you couldn't drink the milk. Right. That's what it's famous for. It can contaminate wheat, likewise, you know. It's a contaminant. And what contaminates the wheat is these guys, you know. Because we'll see some over there. They make, talk about reproduction, boy. This guy's got its strategy down, you know. This guy, they, they'll mature. If I don't, like, take this off of here and crush those, they'll mature. I mean, it's one of those survivors, you know. Um, I thought I should mention it is wild food. Once again, if I was hungry, I'd eat it. You know, I bet it's loaded with nutrients. Anything that tastes that strong? Wild game might be a really good season for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, I got the Latin name looked up up there. It's that top, the first link. 
at something like Avaria or something AV something, you know, but nothing, I, nothing that I want. I try and get rid of it all the time. Well, if you're going by the strength and the taste of it, that walking onion over there is about as strong as anything <laughs> I've had. Uh-huh, it is strong, yeah. But cooking down tames it, right? This doesn't tame very well. You don't think it tames it? it oh, does. it's, it's, yes, that's it's wild. It's not bad to cook. It's, Pardon? it's pretty good cook. Yeah, this, this doesn't, you know, yeah, yeah. No, this is, this is medicine. Yeah. Maybe, like, you know, you don't want somebody to come back to the garden? Hey, have a couple of these, you know? <laughs> okay, so let's just go take a look at the garlic crop. And then I think we'll call it quits, except for I'll do that taste test while we're eating the meal. So I love this. Our neighbor used to burn his leaves, and now he delivers them. Can't go wrong with that. We're not polluting the air, and we're getting them, you know? And he didn't want to have to burn them, so it's win-win. But I'd say come on in here and take a look at this garlic. To me, it's about as nice a garlic as you want. All the stems are nice and fat. Oh, here's that reproduction I was talking about for the wild onion. Anybody want to take a guess on how many are here? We could have a lottery. Wow. I'm going to say 150. It's a lot, whatever it is, you know. Are you going to count? What? Are you going to count? No, I'm not going to count them. I'm going to guess and get somebody else to count them. <laughs> it's a lot, right? I mean, you don't want that to happen. So these guys all should have been pulled here. I don't know that we're going to find one. Actually, that is a little bit more curled. I wish there was one that was so late that I could say this is where you should pull it at. But usually, I'll pull one off and kind of show you. Usually you want like one curl. It's going to be broader, of course, because this is kind of short. One curl before you pull it or you'll be pulling it again. When it first comes up, it's kind of straight. When it gets that, that first curl, then you know it's not going to come back. One source I've said or read that you cut it back to the first leaf. I yeah, pull them. It works fine. We get if you sell them $10 a pound, you cut them back to the first leaf. <laughs> the thing is, they're still going to be tough at that point. Yeah. That's when, then you grind them up and make an ass. Right. Who told That's a good idea. I mean, you tell the chefs that. Yeah. Somebody's got a good idea there. <laughs> Take that to the shark tank and sell it. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so it wasn't really ready, but it's already looking like that, you know? And it's got probably another two weeks on it. So it's going to size up pretty darn nice, you know? Um, and it didn't have its top pulled. So we're going to be okay. Yeah, we're going to be okay, you know? Um, and the wrapper's fine, as long as we don't get more rain, you know? We dodged it this time. I was worried about it, you know? These guys are looking way better just since we weeded them, you know? You go look behind you there and you can see what still has to happen. That's what they all look like. And that was like two, you know, those, that nut sedge when I left was like, okay, I'll get it when I'll come back. It didn't seem that bad. Two weeks of endless rain. <laughs> bad news, you know. So if we look in here, in that patch there, I think, you'll see that there's some bare spots. And that's where, like right there, where the Rhizectonia tore us up pretty bad, you know. This one here got weeded before I left. No, yeah, this one. This one got weeded before I left. This one will probably make some decent onions. They're not going to let you leave again. Um, you know, it wasn't easy. It, it, was a, it was a seminar that only happened that time of year. You know, the person who scheduled it wasn't a farmer. No farmer is going to schedule a two-week trip for the middle of May, you know. It's not a good time. But um, it was worth doing. Okay, so I think that's about everything, unless there's any questions. This is the German Hardy, our New York, German Extra Hardy, New York Hardy, German White, and probably has three or four other names, but it's all the same, you know. And when it's ready, I'll be happy to give you a little bit, and thanks for your um, generosity with the, you know. I'll send you a box with something in it, and you can send me a box with something. Right, we'll do it that way. I love that. I mean, that's that's the glory of agriculture, right? So no oh. companions, though. I don't really see them in the Well, actually, a bunch of them have been blooming, and a bunch are coming on now. The um, sunflowers are coming on. Up at the top there, I'll show you some stuff headed out. But you're not interplanting the container. Oh, you know, they, you know, it's unusual that they didn't. They usually do. They must have not been ready when they planted out. Well, what would you contain and match up with? Yeah, they weren't ready yet. Bachelor buttons, calendula, cilantro, um, dill, all of those would come out. But frankly, we don't have to do them for the onions. The reason to do them is to have them in the beds next to the other beds, you know. The onions, we haven't had that kind of problem. 
But, and actually it looked like a bunch of those got thrown away because they couldn't plant them. Because I looked in the bin and there were all these seedlings that had been tossed away. And that's too bad because we'll have to start another round now. But we had a flat, we always have a flat in the springtime of bachelor, calendula, dill, cilantro, gloriosa daisy, um, and then esoteric other ones. This year we started a bunch of echinacea. Um, right now I got a bunch of other things in there, some things I'd never tried before. Uh, Maltese cross is one I never tried. Turns out that's going to be good for butterflies, which some people say, well, butterflies are mostly pests. You know, it's like, nah, they're food for the beneficials, you know. I've, I've, it's described in our video. I called Rich up one time. I saw one of the white butterflies, the cabbage uh, worm butterfly, flying sideways with its wings closed. It was being hauled off to the young by a dragonfly, you know. So if I got something feeding butterflies, I don't care, you know. But yeah, we, so there's a bachelor button that finished. So some of the stuff that was out is, and I know there's a couple bachelor buttons down here that were planted, um, and they're kind of finished up now, you know. But the next succession didn't get planted because nobody was planting anything. I mean, I didn't get to talk to Jeremy, but Meredith emailed me and said, Jeremy says that there's not standing water in the garden, but if you put this trollow in, the hole fills with water. You know, this is a bowl. Well, you're on a slope, too. We're on a slope, but it's a bowl. I mean, you know, everybody around us is higher, you know. And indeed, that side of the garden, there's a wet weather spring. That side is too wet to work even still, you know. Probably why they didn't weed that was it was too wet to weed yet, yeah. you know. Now that's the gallon soga, right? Gallon soga, yeah. Anybody know that weed? That's fun. I love to teach people this one. It's also known as summer devil. Um, the Germans call it German weed. The French call it French weed. I mean, if Germans call it French weed, the French call it German weed. If you know a plant that goes to seed quicker than this, maybe it's cilantro. But otherwise, it goes to seed all the time, which means that there's young baby crops with no flowers all the time. Is it usually shorter? <laughs> Until it goes to seed, yeah, 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 yeah. And that's when to cut it. It doesn't look very good because it's hairy, but it tastes quite good. It's darn good eating. Also called callaloo. No, callaloo is this one here. We are off topic, but that's okay because we're done. So no, no, no. It's I love talking about weeds. I love telling people to eat weeds. Eating weeds is one of my. That's callaloo, also known as amaranth, or red root or pigweed, but pigweed's a bad name because a lot of things get called pigweed, you know? But they grow this in the Caribbean and they make a fam pretty famous stew with seaweed, I mean with sea seafood, and it's darn good eating. This is actually probably more noticeably culinary than this, but this is my staple. You know, basically there's some summer greens that I grow, different odd Asian ones and stuff, and my game plan is to try and eat greens at least twice a day. And so it's lunchtime and I'm in the garden and I haven't got food in the fridge. I grab handfuls of this because it's always right next to me. And then whatever else is between me and the house. And then I cook it, you know, and it's always good. You know, I can what have is this, called again? this here, no. that's gallon soga. Unless you're German, it's French weed or French, it's German weed, you know. Maybe what I'm more and you about. cook it. Yeah, they're also in the mountains, they call it no business weed because it's got no business being in your garden. Tell it to that. It doesn't think that's true, you know. I know some other people call it summer devil or white weed. It's got white, whitish flowers. It's got a lot of names, you know. But gallon silk is the official. Oh, my favorite thing. I don't know if it's still there, but it used to be that if you went to the home page of the Colombian Embassy, there's a recipe using this on the home page. There's a national stew that this is a key ingredient. And I've talked to Colombians that were tickled to know that we had wasca growing in the garden. Though they know that it, they probably pull it all the time, you know, because they were city people were getting it dried. And like it's a key ingredient in this stew that involves a 260 day potato, which is kind of mealy, and hard corn and tomatoes and chicken. And someday we're gonna make that. We're gonna have a, you know, Colombian stew festival. Is it better to harvest it when it's in bloom? No, it no, it's, it's just too much work when it's in bloom. How much leaf is there there, you know? Get it before, yeah. And don't worry, you'll always have it, you know? Let me know if you can knock it back, you know? It's not a problem, you know? So that's important, right? We want weeds out of our um, garlic, right? Out of our alliums, doesn't mean we can't eat them. That's the best solution to weeds is to eat them. Yeah. But if you can't eat them, pull them anyways on the garlic and the alliums and you'll be happier. And it's, we're not quite done, we're gonna do a taste test, but that'll be a little addendum. So far, this is it. I haven't remembered that one thing about garlic, but I will. If I have to send you an email, I will, you know. Um, happy growing, give me your feedback, let me know. I got the mystery now of the shallots, how much does day length matter? Um, 
pay attention to those things, pay attention to the parameters, and it's not that hard. And even as I say we have the worst onions, we're gonna have a tolerable harvest. You know, they got a lot of time yet before they're done. And if we just keep having sun, they're gonna come through. You know? There's a bunch of varieties, Patterson, um, Copra, um, Expression, I think is that one that I didn't know. Um, it's not, I, got the, I listed a bunch of them up there, you know. And then Cabernet is the red that we like to grow. Tell the uh, sign of the life cycle of an onion in it. How do you tell when it's in the ground right now versus a month from now when it's ready to harvest? Um, it's got to do with when they start falling over. You want about 50% falling over and then you're done. You know? Okay, so it's been a blast. I love sharing all this with you. Grow alliums, you can't, you can't not, right? They're critical to every meal and you can have them year round. You grow a bunch of these odd ones along with these big production ones and you got them. <laughs>